So welcome your experience as it is. which is not an activity. Rather, a recognition of being being recognizing itself as the stillness Silence. Which is beyond the silence of the mind, beyond the silence of the body. the recognition that I is this transparency. This presence. This infinite, invisible. reality of awareness of being which is complete freedom Unaffected, untouched by the mind impressions. Which are its own creation. All 
to there is no creation. as you remain still. You recognize yourself as that stillness. And uh, in this stillness, as this stillness is a nectar of peace and well-being, beauty. love and happiness. That are without opposite. God's truth. God's light, which is beyond the impression of good and evil. in this peace and as this peace. You recognize the direction.
feel it, you know it. You say, yes. Not a, an experience or a feeling much deeper than that. In the stillness of being, in the vastness of being, the freedom of being. beyond all images and reality of, of images, of sensations, of experiences, which do not matter at all. They are of no importance. It is the screen that is the reality of all images. I, this aware presence, this beingness, knowingness, isness, awareness, It has no, no name and yet it goes by all names. It has no form. It shines as all forms. You recognize yourself. As that. Eternal and infinite. The reality of consciousness. So moment by moment, the recognition of the touch of God, the breath of God and the whisper of God. is available. The recognition that my experience is not mine, it is his. It's my reality. 
is his. I am invited to this recognition. I say yes to this invitation under all circumstances, all the situations. I recognize thy will be done, thy will is done. I recognize myself as thyself. There is one self, one truth, one reality, one Brahman. And I walk the path you show me. Because every step I take, I take is your step, not mine. I honor this recognition. I am available for this understanding. I offer myself to this understanding.
So if you have any questions or anything you would like to share, please make sure you unmute your mic and... Hello, Magdi. John. Hello, John. Hi. So you can hear me okay? Because I have my earbuds in. I couldn't, I couldn't hear you on my phone like I usually could. Yes, I hear you. Well, Okay, all right. Um, yeah, I was listening to your uh, the meditation just now. I I tend to always get confused um, when you know the language ends up being dual, which language is. Um, so that's the first thing, even though there is an understanding that I is one in one reality. So, but the, <clears throat> a lot of times when I hear, um, I am taking, oh, I don't know, whatever. When I hear stuff that sounds dual, it, um, it becomes a little confusing. Um, but I still see it as, um, I still see it as one, just a way to express. I think the bigger thing is that uh, and maybe it leads into what I was saying yesterday, um, what I was talking about yesterday, because I, I wasn't able to explain this yesterday as clearly as maybe I can do that today. Um, I did not um, think consciousness or the one um, is a feeling, you know. Um, you know, I'm not looking for a happy feeling uh, to be my true self, um, not as a state. I understand that states come and go, they, they appear and disappear. Um, but I guess maybe, um, it's more like when I hear, um, you and others say that there's uncaused peace and happiness, you know, others say, everlasting peace and happiness and that includes whether there's states or not and i i have that under, understanding or i have that intellectual understanding and i even have that experience at times okay uh, and more often than i used to but it's still there and then i had the experience i had the other day now whether i was just waking up and the brain was going haywire or whatever i don't know but <clears throat> my question is then of course you have that everlasting peace and happiness and that goes on without the impulse like I had with the uh, what I called eerie or fearful or dark feeling or sense or whatever obviously I was taking objects to be my to um, I wasn't seeing them as objects somehow but anyway um you have that despite the objects. In other words, um, I don't, I think most of us have trouble with um, having feelings and sensations, okay? And having everlasting peace and happiness, uncaused peace. Because that doesn't go away because I'm feeling um, unhappy or I'm feeling sad or I'm feeling whatever. So I guess if you can say that you have that everlasting peace and happiness, there is something, I think uh, Rupert Spire once said, when you don't have the impulse and I've heard you say similar types of things. When you don't have the impulse to get rid of, obviously there was an impulse for me to get rid of that eerie feeling, but you don't have that impulse anymore. Um, so I'm, I'm just wondering, you know, when you express that to others, you have that, there is an expression of it. It's not just that it's consciousness. So I'm wondering if you can somehow 
express how we can know that mm, that is happening. I, I know it sometimes when I have that recognition, which is um, I am I am aware of my awareness and the rest is a play. I have that and it's a felt feeling and um, you know, and even that is during times of uh, when I think there's stress and everything, but, but that's not that usual. So I'm just wondering how you would uh, some, some, somehow um, express that as well. I mean, you do it every day, really. I mean, every, that's like, but I don't know. I'm just asking that question. Um, Cause I think that's probably where I was saying, I didn't have that the other day. And I'm sure that was a mistake meaning M-I-S hyphen T-A-K-E, I was taking things to be, um, not taking things correctly. Um, you know, I was taking me being a uh, part of the object or wanting to get rid of, or thinking consciousness should not have the dark and eerie feeling. All right, <laughs> I hope that made some sense. <laughs> yes, John. experiencing the absence of any add-on. the absence of a personal reference. Is peace and happiness. personal reference which most often takes on the form of some desire or objection. is uh, unhappy.
and this objection or desire or resistance is based on the belief that there is a, a better or a worse possibility besides this for somebody to be happy or happier. It's as if you're adding on to the piece of being. The, the responsibility of redesigning your experience to make somebody else happy, some somebody that you imagine, you've imagined. And you are so much in love with that creation of yours, that somebody that you imagined, you're so much in love with that, that you're willing to forget your own peace and happiness. and espouse the task of redesigning the world body-mind experience. To provide happiness that character you've created. And over time you realize that that your love for the happiness of that character that you've created is in fact your love for happiness itself. It's not so much that you love this character, it's that you love happiness. And in time you realize that redesigning your experience is an unhappy endeavor. Mm -hmm. 
that you experience without it. your interest in redesigning it, in adjusting it. It's the perfect reflection of the rays of the sun on the surface of the pond. So the happiness that we seek is revealed when we sort of diminish or cease the activity of unhappiness. So when we say that causeless, when we speak of causeless happiness. We are speaking of the, the pond that is always there, albeit it is covered by the mist. But as the mist lifts, we realize, oh, the pond is there. In our experience, our daily experience, we're not always engaged in realigning our experience or readjusting our experience to satisfy the personal self. Oftentimes we're not. But although oftentimes we are not, because in the background our Love has been misplaced from love of happiness, love of beauty, love of freedom, to the love of some imagined personal experience. Because of the displacement of our love, although we may not be engaged in seeking or resistance, the peace and happiness we experience is not complete. But in time over the period of meditation and contemplation and study and inquiry and invest investigation. Our true love, we, we start to recollect our true love, which is our love for peace and happiness. It doesn't come in one sudden recollection. It comes on many, in many different recollections, many glimpses of true love. And these glimpses uh, carry with them the import of that glimpse, meaning the the perfume of truth. And slowly, sometimes unnoticed, 
You fall in love with that perfume, which has always been your true love. You find yourself rather than engaging in rearranging, reorganizing the world body mind. You find yourself resting more and more in into your true nature, as your true nature, as the peace of being. As of the meditations, the dual aspect of language. The meditations are like music. Yes, the music are, is composed of notes, certain rhythm, certain uh, but when you listen to the music, you're not listening to the notes and you're, you are the music, you're you're not a musicologist studying <laughs> composition in meditation you are in the concert hall. You are the concert hall. You are the music. Thank you, Magdi. I'm listening and um, I'll listen to the recording uh, when you send it out. And um, the <laughs> speaking as a person, <laughs> which you were talking about, uh, the, the so-called hope that I have is um, 
it's that um, that I keep coming back, which I do, and I keep going deeper and that it's not going to be a personal effort because if it were a personal effort for me in a sense that this I, John, has to do it, um, uh, there's too much resistance, you know, to completely, uh, it's just seen in a different way. Mm -hmm. So um, it's just a reminder that um, uh, things like the other day are just opportunities to go deeper. Thank you, Magdi. Yes. And uh, your hope is not your hope. It is God's hope. Yes. Exactly. From itself to itself. Yeah. Thank you. Any questions? Hello, Richard. You're right. Magdi, on the one hand, it seems that events are unimportant. But on the other hand, it seems that events are necessary for us to remember our true nature. That events are required to shatter the illusion, so to speak. Could you speak to this? Yes, uh, Richard. Uh, I mean, the dream, appearance, experience, manifestation refers to the reality that perceives it. It doesn't refer to itself. A thought doesn't perceive another thought. A feeling, a perception doesn't know anything. So experience, what we refer, you refer to as events in your uh, question, refer to that, the reality that perceives, that knows, and that is. Um, now, all events are dream events, meaning 
they're like uh, the firefly at night, you know, the firefly. They're of no significance whatsoever. But it's joyful and fun and I love watching the fireflies in June at night, it's so beautiful. Although there is no significance to manifestation within uh, our experience. We pursue the butterfly, we want to catch the butterfly in the net. <laughs> Poor butterfly. <laughs> um, so yes, the butterfly is, one could say, important because it is something that I can chase with a net and I can catch the butterfly with the net and then I'm happy because I caught the butterfly and then my happiness dissolves right away because it doesn't last, it has to do with catching a butterfly. Now my happiness is, oh, I want to collect the flowers, I want to run in the field and collect the flowers. And so I am happy in doing that, but then that happiness doesn't last. So yes, manifestation, what you refer to as events, have a significance in a way, they have a, a role, a function, which is that they provide a, for the mind an object to seek or to avoid. So seeking and avoiding the aspects of the, the activities, or one could say, of ignorance require a world body mind, require manifestation, require existence. Now existence on its own, maya or whatever the Sanskrit word, excuse me if I use the wrong Sanskrit word, manifestation of its own is neutral. And uh, like the colors of the rainbow. But it is manifestation that somehow becomes an object for ignorance to arise. So we, we seek objects, we seek experiences, we seek certain situations, we seek relationships, we seek a better partner, a more beautiful partner, a wealthier partner, whatever. In the world of events, in the phenomenal world. So the ignorance and happiness uh, is connected with the body-mind, the senses, and the mind. So in a way you could say that they are insignificant. They have no significance from the perspective of the, their neutrality, and they have a significance from the perspective of desiring and resisting, wanting, seeking, getting and losing.
Now, that's our experience. Our experience is mind experience. We experience thoughts, the feelings and sensations, and we overlook until we don't. We overlook presence, we overlook the peace of being, we overlook the reality of our experience. So until there is the blooming of the understanding about truth, about our true nature, about consciousness, our experience is dealing with events, getting what we want, feeling a temporary happiness, and then wanting again, desiring, attaining, losing, desiring, attaining, etc. So yes, you could say that that events are part of the makeup. You said the events are required to shatter the illusion. Yes, they're part of the makeup. Uh, they're part of the, the deck, the cards that are being dealt. They're part of the play. But the shattering of the illusion is via understanding. Understanding is beyond mind. Understanding is the revelation of truth. Thank you, Magdi. I, I feel sometimes, I don't know, on one hand, sometimes it seems like looking for the right combination of things to fall into place, but I know that's not really the, the case. But I do, I feel like I'm not asking quite the right question here. Mm -hmm. And maybe there isn't a question, I don't know. But it's sometimes, in my experience, it seems that learning or seeing, as you say, you know, the, the futility of the pursuits, that there's a value in learning their futility to understanding. Is it, would, that, would that be safe to say? Or Yes, it is, it is, yes, yes, you, yes, absolutely. Before we are, we turn our attention towards uh, the source towards where happiness really is, uh, to a certain extent, we have to see the futility of seeking happiness in relationships and situations, in experiences, in objects. Yes, yes. Uh, so that, that, that appetite for experiences uh, or that addictive tendency for experiences and quiets down, calms down. And uh, when, when that, the seeking of, of happiness in situations and experiences, when that sort of, uh, so you see the futility of that, uh, it doesn't mean now that you are satisfied. You, you, you still, you still are seeking happiness. But now you realize that seeking happiness in in experiences that isn't doesn't deliver, doesn't deliver it. So uh, you start to look for happiness elsewhere, and this elsewhere is you look for. Happy, the happiness that, that is not in experiences, that is not in situations, that is not conditional. So it's it it's it. There is a, a new inquiry, a new contemplation uh, that uh, starts to sort of you know unfold 
for us. Uh, we start asking questions that the mind cannot answer. Like, oh, if happiness is not in the realm of experience, where is it? What is it? And the, the mind can does not know. Mind by the mind, I mean the process of thinking, which is which is repetitive, which is ancient, which is a rehashing. Thinking is a rehashing of the old. It seems to be fresh and new, but it's not. So by the mind, I mean the old is no longer can no longer answer, can no longer satisfy you. So then you find yourself as if without any tools. <laughs> But soon enough, you realize that, whoa, there is the biggest tool of them all, which is awareness, consciousness, which is not a tool, but as a way of speaking, as a way of speaking. And as when you, you come upon the teaching, you come up, you start to hear the teaching, the teaching meaning the, the words of the sages, you start to hear, to hear, although the, the teaching of the sages are always available, until you sort of become disillusioned with seeking and avoiding in the world body mind, until you arrive to this point, you are not hearing. You, you, it's as if you. The cotton, the cotton in your ear, <laughs> and all the bees are flying around your face. You, there are too many bees. You're just too busy chasing the bees. You cannot uh, hear or perceive. You see. Then you start hearing and understanding. The understanding takes some time, but you start to understand the Dharma. You start to understand the teaching. You hear the teaching. You start to become interested because you are interested in happiness, in truth. But just, you know now, it's no longer your disillusion with the world. You know it's not out there. It's not out there. So, but you're still looking for the happiness and the truth. And so you, the interest, your interest is still there. You may, there is a period where we go back and forth. We still, we see a beautiful, <laughs> Maserati would say, oh, wow, that's, that's happiness. That's, these people are really happy, you know, they, oh my God, look at the house they have, the, the gardens they have, the servants they have, they must be happy. So that, there may be a period of uh, wavering, but it doesn't, doesn't last long. It's, it's, yes. Yeah, so, so the disillusion, disillusionment with uh, happiness out there is, has its, it, it's one of the signposts that you have to sort of uh, pass, you know, like, like on your way to to California, you have to cross Colorado and Nevada. <laughs> well, the Rockies are very beautiful. I love the Rockies. I mean, the, you know, you go up in the Rockies, it's so beautiful. <laughs> but it's not California. <laughs> what, 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 John? It's not California. It's a nice place to visit, but right. not to see. It's not California, right. <laughs> right, it's not the... the, the wonderful weather of Temecula, although it's been raining for the past two days here, you know. Oh, it's been very mild in Virginia, Magda. You moved oh, yeah? To, yeah? Yeah, it's like 70 degrees. Yes, yes. I saw, I saw um, uh, people demonstrating in, in Washington, D.C., and they were in T-shirts, and I thought, oh, my goodness, is this a Photoshop? Is this, <laughs> did they Photoshop all these people <laughs> in T-shirts? In... But, yes, yeah, so, oh, nice. Well, I hope you're enjoying the good weather then. No. Yes, thank, thank you. I, I, it, I have been, thank you. I, I think, I, I won't take up too much time, but I think that 
you know, talking about like the, 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 the disillusionment with, with pursuits. I think that um, sometimes what I, what I do, I, I conflate like there's this because there's there's different responses you can have to that and one is is that you describe which I try to to find the path of, of continued inquiry and into non-conditional happiness but I think that there's also a motivation to, to, to seek out a way of life well I know I'm not happy from x and y and z so let me try to find a way of life that will remove x y and z and but that's sort of but you're still making happiness contentions or conditional upon way of life that you yes and no Richard yes yes and no now in terms of you know our life um, we realize over time in some cases a long time hopefully quicker the sooner the better that there are certain certain ways of living, certain in, engaging in certain activities, in certain jobs, in certain careers, in certain relationships that are, that are not happy. And uh, they're not happy because they're not really aligned with, with truth. They're not aligned with, with love. They're not aligned with uh, the wisdom. Uh, and so then we find ourselves being interested in making some changes in our life, maybe changes in where we live or what kind of work we do or what sort of uh, friends we, we, uh, we hang out with or what sort of uh, habitual activities we have in, we engage in. And uh, there is some wisdom in that, uh, Richard. It's not that you are seeking a happiness in the world. He said that you're 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 adjusting your 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 uh, aligning your aligning your life, your relationships, your activities with your true nature, with love, with joy with peace with ease uh, for example like if you remember years ago i used to work 16 17 hours a day and somehow i was engaged in that it sort of it didn't happen overnight but i realized that's that's, that's that doesn't make sense that's not good that's that's not is something off about that in that I wanted to sort of, yes, work, but don't mind working, but easier, not so strenuous, not so. And that wasn't about like seeking happiness in the world. It was more about that there was some, some, some madness <laughs> in how things were operating. And, and I, it took many years for the change to occur because the habits were deeply ingrained, but uh, I never felt that I was seeking the happiness in the world or in in my experience. Rather, it was more of an adjustment. And uh, when I was young, I remember I used to love to drive really fast, you know. I don't know why. It's, and it took a while to realize that, okay, something off about that. It can hurt other people, you know. I, I could hurt other people. And, and why the rush? Why all this hurry? It, 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 it's, so, so that also started to change. It took, it took a while, <laughs> but eventually it, it came to a place that, feels more, more harmonious, more. So there are things like that in your life, relationships. Uh, so I would not say that making adjustments in your life means that you are 
seeking happiness in the world body mind. No. It could be that you're just realigning your world body mind experience in order for the celebration of truth is possible. Like one thing that was always very important for me was to have time for my contemplation. And so whenever I was engaged in activities that, that was just, uh, they were like having to do with food, shelter and clothing that was too much, it, it, it interfered with my interest in having some, making some time and having some time that balances the food, shelter and clothing activities with my love for contemplation and truth. So that, that also was, it, it required a certain adjustment, you know, in, uh, in my life in the decisions that I was making. And uh, for a long time, there were some fears about uh, making some changes. I somehow feared of the letting go of my grip, you see. It took quite a while to realize that there is a, a much stronger grip than my grip, which is God's grip, which is not a grip, but God's love. I realized that, that there is magic and uh, that realization proved itself to be true. Thank you very much, Magdi. Okay, Richard. Hold to the right uh, to everything there is a season and a time for every purpose under heaven, a time to be born and a time to die. A time to plant, a time to uproot. It's beautiful. Yes. Is that that's a song too, isn't it? Was it Johnny Mitchell? Well, anyways, yes, it's beautiful. Thank you for sharing, Holger. This is so beautiful. I'm really grateful for your satsangs. Um, hmm. I can see that what I'm really looking for is totally independent of circumstances. And this is so amazing. Yes. I mean, for sure, I still prefer my have it nice, have my circumstances nice, and um, but I'm not dependent on it. Mm -hmm. Yes. So like my whole life, I was looking at the painting and always overlook the canvas. Yes. And it's always here. Yes. Just my mind thinking cannot put it into words. That's the only problem. We don't need, don't, we don't need the words. <laughs> no, no, no. no, no. <laughs> Beautiful. Hmm. Well, thanks, Richard. Yeah, I remember the song. Hello. Hello, Anna. So you've talked about happiness and could you talk some more about it? I tend to associate it again with like an experience and you talk about it that it's not an experience. Yes, 
happiness as an experience, I mean, all experiences are uh, conditional. They're, they're in time and space. There's the beginning and ending. There's a, a, a happiness that has a beginning and end, an ending that's sort of dependent, dependent on conditions or situations or events. Or, uh, is it's not it's not happiness it's this satisfaction maybe temporary satisfaction <laughs> um, a couple of things uh, I often like to point that uh, the happiness that we experience when we achieve a certain goal or get our desire fulfilled is uh, not so much that we've achieved our goal is, is that at the moment of goal achievement, there is an end of desire and the experience of the absence of desire is the experience of peace, of happiness. It's, it's not that you're fulfilled because you you got that which you wanted. You're fulfilled because you are free from wanting because the, the fulfillment is there. And it was sort of, uh, there was a, there was, it was veiled by desire. The, the happiness was veiled by, by the desire, which is a, you know, the subject object relationship, the, mental, the mind sort of, the sort of imagines as an imagination, imagining a, a personal self, a somebody and, and, and the world. So there's an in, the inner, the inner mind, the inner me and the, and the external world. That, that, so desire is this, this, uh, uh, this movement of, wind, <laughs> this energetic, uh, uh, it's a combo of an object and subject that come together. Uh, and it, it veils, you know, it's like, it's like when there is a, a wind or a tornado, it, 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 all you're seeing is, the, is the, the wind and the, how the clouds are moving. You, you, you're not aware of the of the sky, the wide open sky. So desire and the, and the fulfillment of desire and then the seeking and the activities that engage towards the fulfillment of the desire, all of that veils uh, the happiness of our true nature. Uh, in the absence of the me, meaning in the absence of desire or fear. There is peace. There is no, there isn't, missing or a sense of lack is happiness and freedom from having to having to dot 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 having to freedom from needing needing to in order to I need to dot 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 in order to dot 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 freedom from that in the in the in your uh, yourself as in yourself in your true self as your true self is a peace the self is the peace what what you are is aware presence it, it, 
there's no desire there in that. Desire is an arising, it's a thought arising. The first thought that arises is unseen, you don't see the thought. The first thought arises, you don't see it, it's I am Amna. We don't see that thought, but it's there. I am Amna and then the, oh, well that's, that's something I need to have because she has it and, and I need to have it because when I have it, then I'm, I'm feeling good. <laughs> But the unseen, unseen thought is I am Amna. But I is not, I it has no quality, it has no phenomenal quality. I is the reality, I is truth, I is this aware presence, whatever it is that is, the isness of, of being and that which perceives is aware, that it perceives right now, that it is right now, that is transparent presence, you see. And happiness, because it's overlooked, because, because of the, the I thought, the me feeling, happiness is uh, over, or veiled, is overshadowed, is, is veiled. And so when we uh, have an understanding, a moment of understanding about our true nature, meaning a peek into our true nature, a peek into happiness, which is our true nature. There is a, wow, there is a, a, an ex, a sort of, it's as if it's like sort of a new discovery. <laughs> like the clouds, they part, they see the sky, and say, oh my God, wow, what is that? What is that? It's the sky, you see. But the sky is always there, you know. But, but because you, you only see the clouds, when there is a small parting of the clouds and you see this blue sky, you go, wow, what is that? It's a magnificent experience. But when all the clouds are gone, it's a magnificent experience, yes, but so what? You're happy, you're happy, you know. The sky is there, you're happy. You're not going every day. Oh wow, oh wow, oh wow. You only go oh wow when there is a parting of the of the of the of the clouds, you see. But as the more you have an experience of as a way of speaking, okay, uh, of, of your true nature, the more you're aware, you become aware of the sky. Then at some point, you are you are happy without knowing you are happy. The way Francis uh, speaks about it, he says, "You are too busy happy to are too busy being happy to notice that you are happy." <laughs> well, that's how he says it. You know, you're, it's our true nature. It's like when you wake up in the morning. You wake up in the morning. Oh, you're stretchy, you're, you're still sort of, the dream is sort of dissolving, the body is starting to move. There is this, a phase of uh, waking up, of you're, you're becoming awake from sleep, deep sleep to awake, the state of wakefulness. But after an hour or after two hours, you're not going, wow, I'm awake, wow. It's two o'clock, oh, I'm awake, three o'clock, I'm awake. You don't, you don't do that anymore. Because being awake, when you're awake is, is it's, what, it's what it is, you see. So it's like that with our true nature, you see. It's like that with happiness. I have another question. Yes. Thank you. So um, I heard it being said that our true nature is stillness and that we avoid that stillness. And we have what? And, and, we, and we avoid that stillness. Yes. Well, Could you? Yes. So 
just true nature is address its stillness and in activity it is world body mind and much more than that at least from the perspective of a particular manifestation it's world body mind but it could be so much more than that because God's creativity is infinite so yes but true nature is stillness, but it's also activity. It's also uh, the, what we refer to as thinking, perceiving, and, and sensing, but, and way beyond that, beyond that. Now, in terms of avoid the avoidance of stillness, that refers to, to the me, you know. The, the sense of, um, personal self is, is the, this belief that I am somebody, something. I am this body-mind. That belief is, is a, the process of thoughts and feeling, which is an activity. And stillness is a non-activity. So the activity of, the, that, that is the activity of thinking and feeling and seeking and wanting and desiring and comparing and analyzing and judging etc this activity which which we refer to as the me uh the me activity the activity which refers to as a, as a self the personal self doesn't like stillness because stillness is antithesis of of uh, the activity of looking wanting seeking talking do they like me don't did i say the right thing oh yeah it, it, this, this whole activity which is, which is, which is like the activity of the, you know, the Santa Claus. He has all these, um, these people. What do, you, what do you call them? The, the elves. <laughs> the elves. They are working, making the toys. <laughs> so, imagine Santa Claus. He, they stop working. Santa Claus is out of business. He needs the elves to to work. <laughs> so the stillness is like the elves. They stop working. They go on strike. Then Santa Claus, who is Santa Claus? Without the elves, without the toys, you see. So similarly, uh, a stillness from the perspective of the me uh, is, is not desirable. It's, it's uncomfortable. This is why often you find when you are with friends and or in life, you find that People, they don't, they, they can't be silent. They, can, they, they, they feel nervous or uncomfortable about being, because then who are they, you know? Are they, who are they when they're silent? You know, how are they, they, they can't, the me needs to, to tell me something. So at least say, say, uh, say you like me, tell me something. <laughs> <laughs> and also, not just that, in the activity, often when we are alone, boredom, when we get bored, we need something, we need to do something, we need to do something, for instance, read something, pick up something, buy something, shop, uh, eat, uh, I don't know, travel, uh, uh, whatever, yes? So it's, it's, it's not just, uh, it's not just the silence, but the stillness, the stillness of of the body mind or the entire thing has to somehow movement is is uh, is uh, is important for for the, 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 that the, for Santa Claus you know for Santa Claus so so I would say it, it's a good idea for you to experiment with with that when you are feeling uncom uncomfortable, experiment with remaining silent. Be uncomfortable, experience that. Experience that. Experience that, and, but just stay there. Stay there long enough so that you really go to the depth of it, you know. And do it whenever it's possible for you. 
Yeah. And uh, don't try to fix it. Just, just be there, feel it. Allow it to experience it. Don't avoid it. So you can uh, see uh, through it. Thank you so much. Okay. Hi, Magdi. Hello, Sunita. Hello, Sunita. Sun yeah, hello. Sunita. Hi, hi, Magdi. Very, very lovely to hear your voice. Yeah. Yes, hello. So nice to be here. Um, I had a question again, uh, very close to what was being discussed and the stillness part. And for me, I think it's um, the stillness, the, the word that I associate that with is some kind of an unknowing, like th there's no knowing, it's complete, complete unknowing kind of a space. Mm -hmm. um, and then when I'm needed, like, like in my work or my relationships, my, my, my responsibilities or so on, um, there is there is some kind of a knowing, but then this knowing is completely different from how I used to know before. So before there used to be this grasp, and, and through that perspective, I would know. And more and more that I'm feeling comfortable in the unknowing, mm -hmm. the, the knowing is, is very different from how it was before. It mm -hmm. still knows, but then it's not holding on to the knowing. It's a moment-by-moment -moment knowing. Mm -hmm. um, my question is, um where do you where do you rest because the unknowing if if i if i get into the unknowing and and it's it's so restful and it's like and there, there is no unknowing there, there's no knowing there mm -hmm. it's 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 very um so yeah my, my question is whether you rest in the unknowing mm -hmm. or whether you rest in kind of a knowing that happens through the unknowing of the of the here and now, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, because e even for me, even knowing the here and now, right, that there, there is some kind of an active, which is not complete unknowing. It's, mm -hmm. th there is still that activity that, that is going on. So, yes. uh, and, uh, and sometimes I, I for, for me, the, the experience, how it is happening is it's, it's a moment that goes into unknowing. The next moment is knowing, then again, unknowing, and knowing, and the knowing could be anything, here and now, thoughts, emotions, relation, anything. And the, it's continuous shifting between unknowing, knowing, and knowing, and knowing. And I didn't know if I had to rest myself somewhere or... Yes. So Sunita, when it comes to the knowing, what is it that is knowing? It just feels that I, I don't know what knows to be very, very frank. I really don't know what knows, but some, it's, it, the, the knowing is really happening in a very, very nice way, much more intimate than how I used to know before. Okay, okay. So, so it is, when, when it is just knowing, which is void of a knower. Yeah. Meaning knowing, knowing. Yes. And one could also say knowing, knowing that it is knowing. Knowing, knowing that it is knowing. Yeah. So the knowingness belongs to the knowing, belongs yeah. to knowing. And knowingness and knowing are the same. So there is a knowing which is knowing knowing itself, one could also say in religious lingo, it's God's knowing through this particular body-mind, okay, but it's God's knowing. The knowing is not a personal knowing, mm -hmm. but it is God's knowing via this particular body-mind. 
as of not knowing, not knowing similarly is God's presence, is God's reality. Because God's reality is the source of all manifestation in religious lingo. Let's bring it to a different lingo. It is out of not knowing that knowing arises and within not knowing that knowing arises and as not knowing that knowing arises because whatever arises arises out of the screen, the, the availability. So before knowing or before arising, any arising, there has to be the spaciousness, let's say, as we are speaking, the availability for the knowing to arise. The knowing does not arise out of another knowing. It arises out of not knowing. A thought does not arise out of another thought. A thought does not produce another thought. A sensation does not produce another sensation. It all arises out of consciousness. So two things. First, it's important to comprehend and contemplate the impersonal aspect of both knowing and not knowing. That it is not sunita. There is no sunita in as, as a personal uh, self uh, in both either knowing or not knowing. Also to comprehend that the reality of knowing is not knowing. So knowing is a coloring of not knowing, is a the dance of not knowing. When not, not knowing dances, there is knowing. <laughs> uh, metaphorically speaking, of course. Now the the guiding light for you in this uh, in your contemplation is the the peace of being, the inner peace and tranquility, the freedom, the joy, the well-being, not as an experience, but as uh, 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 um, a a sense of that, let's say, of the peace. That would be a good uh, star to follow, the star of, of peace, freedom. And as your knowing in, in, in your activities, when there is a, a knowingness that is becoming less and less uh, pursuing or seeking, or that's a good, that's a good direction. It's, it's a good direction. Yeah, you see, there is still this. So, so, so as I'm, I'm, I'm just talking to you, and as I'm asking this, this question, um, there is still that light clinging, or a thread, or or something that is holding on that particular 
self or, or I'm not talking about the big self. I'm just talking about the separate self that is trying to have the right experience. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And um, that, and, and, it, and, and, and it keeps coming up again and again. Yes. Like that, 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 that is what the one that asked this question now. I mean, I just realized as I was yes. talking to you yes. and it's, and I know that I, to, to be in that space is not to even have a point or not to judge an experience. And so, um, because as soon as I do that, I'm not in that space. Um, nevertheless, that is one thing that is constantly trying to evaluate the experience. Yes. Even if it's the experience of unknowing or knowing, it's, it just tries to be safe there by shifting between knowing and unknowing and knowing and knowing, unknowing and so on. Um, and, uh, and, and, and after a while, I mean, it, it gets pretty stressful um, because the the it it takes a lot of energy for it to do that and yes. oh yeah um, and 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 there are some moments where where I don't bother about the experience I I just go in there and things are just happening uh, I'm completely one with the experience and again when I say this experience it can be anything I mean I don't want to classify the experience as being right. only good and happy all the time or so. It, it could be any kind of an experience. I could even be angry, but then even being angry is like completely one with that. I mean, that, that's the experience that I'm talking. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, 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 so this evaluator or... Yes, yes, yes. I, I, yeah, it's, mm -hmm. I, I know I'm, it's, it's, it's a, it, the, the question itself doesn't make sense because I'm asking you what I should do. But I, sh I cannot, the, the fact that I'm asking is it's, it's still there and it won't, I don't know. I don't know how to explain uh, that. Yes, no, I understand. Uh, no, so that there is, it's not necessarily the personal self that is asking. There is an interest. And the interest, and there is a genuine interest. The interest is not personal. It's an interest in truth, in freedom, in happiness. So it's, an, it's, in religious terms, it's God's interest that's being spoken through us. It's, it's an interest in truth. Interest in truth comes from truth. It's not, doesn't come from the personal self. So it's, the question that you're posing doesn't necessarily mean that it is the illusory personal self that is asking it. Now, in terms of the evaluator. Now, a few things. It's when that process arises of the evaluator, whenever possible and if possible, to uh, remind yourself that that evaluator is a, a fiction. That reality, the real, what is real consciousness is not in the evaluating business. It's yeah. the creator of all creations. It can create volcanic eruptions. It can create beautiful roses. <laughs> it does. It does. So it, it's not going to evaluate itself. It doesn't care about evaluation. So if at all possible, remind yourself that at that moment of evaluation, at that moment, somehow you are choosing the illusion of something else besides consciousness, some other being, some other reality called the evaluator, <laughs> in this case, than the reality of consciousness. It's one reality, one reality, which is consciousness. And it's not in the business of measuring, evaluating, judging, improving, disproving. That's not agenda. There is no, 
that all belongs to the illusion. So remind yourself that, hey, there is one reality and that there is no other reality called an evaluator or the mind or the improver, etc. Now, of course, as best you can, don't, it's not about success or failure because the understanding of our true nature, the understanding about the reality of consciousness, as we continue to contemplate the reality of consciousness, its roots uh, grow, it blooms, and the recollection of consciousness becomes more and more readily available to us than previously. Uh, now, also, in terms of the evaluator, the evaluator arises to you as thought and sensation. You're doing it wrong, for example, as a thought, quotes and quotes, an evaluating thought and the sensation, whatever the sensation, maybe contraction in the belly, maybe the throat, whatever. Now, the evaluator is trying to tell you, hey, don't look at anything else but me. Right? Right? He's trying to say, okay, forget about everything else. Okay, you know, just listen to me. What I'm inviting you is to contemplate that this evaluator is in your experience, in, your, in the actuality of your experience, is thought and sensation, both of which are neutral. Both of which are like the fli flickering light of the uh, night fly, the, 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 the uh, night... Uh, the firefly, yeah, yeah, yeah. Firefly. Both Got of it. Them are, <laughs> they're like the firefly. They are completely impersonal, completely neutral, and they're like the firefly. But the evaluator is you, no, 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 <laughs> forget about this, I'm thought and I'm sensation, I am real. I am real and you, I want your life now, your, your life now to be about me. For, for, Sunita, forget about everything else. Oh, your work, your, your partner, your work. No, it's about me. About mm -hmm. me, it's about, about me. I mean, yes. That's what the evaluator is trying to tell you. But there's no freaking evaluator, excuse my lingo. There is just a thought the saying, ah, Dad, I'm really, I keep failing or whatever. And the sensation, which are both neutral and they're like the firefly. The evaluator is trying to tell you, fight with me, argue with me, listen to me, uh, be, uh, do your prostrations to me, uh, declare war to me, uh, love me, hate me, uh, desire me, uh, measure me, uh, whatever. <laughs> so yeah. there is a... Uh, 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 an invitation for you to rather than using the term evaluator say okay here's, here's a thought a thought that is so called about me a thought about me a thought about me as if a thought knows you thought knows nothing about you Sunita thought is something you perceive right it doesn't know anything about you. How can a thought know anything about you, you being consciousness? Yes? Yeah. But you... Yes. You, yeah, I mean, I from, a, yes. from an understanding standpoint, and I can feel, like, experientially, I can feel what you're saying. But I know, I mean, it's that, that's, that's the, 
it's like that that last fear that is there that you Sunita, see what if uh, if i sorry yeah. to interrupt you Sunita, sorry to interrupt you do not underestimate understanding you saying from okay. understanding point of view understanding is it's it is about understanding yeah stand under understanding when you stand under you see it this understanding is don't underestimate understanding and you you said but but yes yes i i get what you're saying but but what now you're going to go into a narrative but what but from a blah 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 no there's no but smita you understand your understanding that a thought cannot know you you know a thought so what power can a thought have given that it is an object of your perception you get that i know you understand that i know you are understanding that don't underestimate this understanding say yes to this understanding i get it I get it. A thought cannot know me. I know the thought. A sensation, any sensation, even like a, it, it, the, what we refer to as a depression, a sensation, is something that you experience. It does not know you at all. No. You are the knowingness. You meaning there's only one awareness. You are the knowingness. I didn't mean to interrupt. You. Often, no, 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 no. I, no, I, 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 I. Yes, I, I completely un understand. Like, I really understand. Uh, understand it's... Allow that understanding. Say yes or understanding. Allow it. We don't, don't try to manage understanding or let it. Let un understanding. Understanding is not mind activity. Understanding is beyond mind. It's 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 it's, it's 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 the trust that 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 somewhere it fails that if I let go of that last thing I don't exist like you know it's it's somewhere that that's again it comes as a thought it goes away it comes it goes away and it's like and I don't so I don't know what the next moment I'll be talking I'll be doing if there are moments wherein I have left I mean it's it's not there. And things have happened uh, without that, but then it suddenly pulls me back. It's like I, I don't know what the next thing is going to. Uh, will I do something completely what, wrong? Sunita, what has happened? Forget about what has happened. It's happened. It's gone. It's it's absolutely gone. What has happened is absolutely gone. Yes, absolutely yes. gone. Now, anything that's happening. What you, what you are speaking, or, or whatever it is that you're speaking, there is a thought that says, I am speaking it. Yes. Okay. That thought that says I'm speaking it is a false, false thought because it, it, the thought that is arising to you doesn't, is not, you're not fabricating it. It is arising to you. You perceive the thought. You speak the words that are being spoken through you. Words are being spoken through you. Yes. I do not speak the thought. I am the speaker of God's thoughts as a way of speaking it in a religious lingo. I, I'm being spoken through. So the concern about Sunita is, has an assumption in it. The assumption is that Sunita is the doer. Sunita yes. is the chooser. But then there is a Sunita that is the that is the, the, the she's got to make the right choice. And my goodness, if you have to make the right choice, I mean we're all in hell. How can we make the right choice? How do we know we don't have a crystal ball? Nobody has a crystal ball, so nobody can make the right choice because we don't have a crystal ball. There is no personal doer. It, this does yeah. not mean we do not speak. We speak, but the words that we speak are being spoken through us. Our actions are not our actions. They're the actions that are being acted through us. We have to honor that recognition, honor that understanding. 
Because if we were the actual doer, meaning the actual chooser, meaning the actual knower, we would all do the best, we would always, we would do, we would never choose unhappiness. Yes. <laughs> Why would we choose unhappiness? We would not. So we are not. There is no, a, there is no me, there isn't like a personal sunita. Sunita is, an, is, is appears to you, appears to you being awareness. Sunita appears to you as images, as sensations, as, as memory, as, yes? Yeah. Sunita appears to you. Even sometimes in your dream, in your night dream, you may dream of Sunita. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Even in your night dreams, Sunita appears to you. <laughs> <laughs> Sunita is God's creation and the way God plays the world body mind particular experience via a body mind that we call Sunita and that we call Magdi, we call Holger and Holly, etc. But yeah. do not mistake yourself to be Sunita. Because what you are is I. You are I, right? I. I am. I am. You don't say, hi, I am Sunita. Oh, Sunita just uh, woke up. Sunita, uh, Sunita is uh, speaking. Sunita is perceiving. No, you say I. We all say I. The fact that we all say I is not to be underestimated. It's not to be disregarded. We, we don't say, hey, I am I-582 and Holger is I-586 and Sunita is I-612 and Amna is I-1492. Uh, Correct? We don't say that. So how come we don't say that? We don't say that because it's one I, one I, one reality. One consciousness. Okay, body mind is called Sunita the Sweet. It's a beautiful name. I love it. Body mind is called John. Wonderful. John, Jeff, etc. That's a body mind. I call my car, uh, I used to call my car Cinderella. I remember <laughs> years ago, I used to have this car. I love that car. It drove so fast. I used to call it Cinderella. <laughs> 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 but I am not Cinderella. I am not my car. I am not the body. I'm not, not my body. Not, I'm not my beautiful shoes. <laughs> yes. There is a, a, a healing aspect to understanding Sunita, a restoring, a restore, a restores order, understanding restores order, trust understanding. Yes? Yes? Yeah, thank you, Magdi. Yeah, let it go where it goes, okay? Don't, okay. don't hold on, but let it, okay? Okay, thank you, thank you, Magdi. Yeah, okay, lovely yeah, to be with you and see you again. Okay, friends. Well, lovely to see you all, Richard, hello Richard, and Holger, hello Holger, Holly, and Sunita, Amna, and Jeff, and John. Thank you all. Thank you, Maggie. Thank you, Maggie. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.